it's time to start our annual meeting. Uh, we do this once a year. <laughs> and, you know, as, as we were having our worship this morning and we sang the song that God has been so faithful, you know, that really is true for this year, um, as it is for every year. But, you know, this year, um, when we think about all the things that have happened, um, I especially think about, um, I know it didn't make the video, but when the skies were dark, it was all, and you could see the glow of the fires coming. And, you know, over at our house, we got the call, evacuate now. And it's like, oh my goodness, what's going on? And we didn't know whether, you know, we would have a, a house to come back to or whether we would have a pile of burnt, charred mess to come back to. We didn't know. And there we are, you know, I'm, I'm looking at my house in my rearview mirror and I'm saying, am I going to see it again? And God is so faithful. Uh, none of us here, I mean, there was a lot of people that did evacuate and none of us lost our homes. Um, I, I know some people know people who did um, because, I mean, we were a small state and there's a lot of, a lot of that happened. Um, but God is so faithful. Um, and... And he showed that this year probably more than any other. Um, and not only was he faithful in the finances of the church, but he's been faithful in taking care of us. And, um, and that this year that was that was very evident. Um, and I know every year it seems like the Lord you know gives me a verse for the year, and it might be halfway through the year or almost all the way at the end of the year before that verse comes up, and I just keep going over and over in my mind. And this year it was Romans uh, 15, 13. You know, may the God of hope, you know, fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, overflowing with the hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that is just, that has been my verse for this year. You know, last year um, it was Ephesians. It was out of the first chapter of Ephesians. year before that, it was out of Matthew. And, and you know, it's just every year... Um, the Lord, you know, just kind of just through my studies, this verse will stick in my mind. And, uh, you know, this year, as you're going through your Bible, um, find that verse that just sticks in your mind, and you just keep going over and over that. And that, that verse I put as my bookmark. It's, I know it's a, it's a technical bookmark. Um, it's a, a three-by-five card, and I've got it written on there. It doesn't have to be much, but it's just a reminder of the faithfulness of God in what He's taking you through. Um, so, anyways, let's get on to our, our official part of our meeting. Um, I do want to say that God has been faithful in what He has done in our finances. Even though our finances were down this year, uh, just like our attendance has been down, um, God is still faithful. We still paid all our bills. Um, I think um, it's pretty close to it, but our savings and our checking account are pretty much the same this year as they were last year. Even though our, our giving was down, I think it was 28 or 30 percent, if I recall correctly. Um, last year, uh, you can see at the figures here, if you look at your, um, at your handout there, you see a statement of activity. Um, and right up here where it says general funds, I know it's really small there, but we tried to get it on a, on a concise handout. Um, our actual giving this year was uh, $74,000 in our um, general funds. Uh, last year it was 102 so we've had that that drop in our uh, giving to the general funds but um, I looked this morning at our savings account and our checking account and our current balance in savings is still thirty thousand dollars which is about what it was last year and our uh, excuse, me, excuse me that was our checking account and our savings is at forty six thousand so we still have that money sitting in the bank that was sitting in the bank last year at this time. Um, now, um, when we get down to the, the bottom of the page, we'll see that we still have a parsonage to go through, and we've set aside $40,000 for that. We didn't have to dip into that money at all. And we still paid for the remodel of the bathroom upstairs, which was an additional $10,000. And we paid for the new HVAC system that we put in. Uh, not having to dip into savings and all that kind of stuff. All that came straight out of our checking account. So God has been faithful in, in, in what we've done, even though um, we've had a, a less income than we, than we did before. So, um, 
Anyway, so let me go on through this. Um, if you look look through here, there's there's all kinds. Of, okay, I got to highlight this one. Bank service charges, hundred and three dollars. You're like, what the heck? What kind of bank do we have? Have any of you bought checks recently? <laughs> <laughs> do you know how expensive those puppies are? That that was buying checks. It cost me more to ship them to me than it did for the checks. So that was actually, we bought checks this year. <laughs> I was like, holy mackerel. I had to have them fast, too, because we, we had some coming up. And I went to the check, and we got the check thing is here at the church. And I went through there, and I go through the book, you know, you hand me this book. And I go to the bottom one, and it's got this, and it's just the check register. It's not checks. I'm like, ah! I need checks. <laughs> so that was that. Was, that, was that. Um, board meeting. Uh, we pay, we actually pay people to be on our board. <laughs> Nineteen dollars and sixty cents. Uh, that actually bought us dinner for a board meeting. <laughs> um, so so we went, we had pizza. Um, and then there's all, all kind of a lot of our expenses. You can see down. It's probably easier to look on here. You can see down the column uh, what we had in our budget and what our uh, budget for the next year is, the 2021. And like cleaning supplies was only $29.98 as, as opposed to our $400 budget for cleaning supplies. Well, one of the benefits of online churches here <laughs> is that nobody's here making it dirty. So we didn't buy any cleaning supplies. Um, I mean, there was just, I went back through and I looked, I couldn't find any where we bought any cleaning supplies really. So that's, I mean, so, you know, as our giving was down, so was our expenses. And, and even in like uh, children's, when we get down to children's ministries and all that, we didn't buy any Sunday school supplies because we didn't have Sunday schools. We still don't have Sunday schools Vic, because, but I do like that in the proposed budget, we left it at 400. That's a, that's walking in faith. Right. And we're going to need that. We're going to need the cleaning supplies. We're going to get dirty again. <laughs> You're messing people. Okay, so anyway, so um, we'll go down. Anything that sticks out in your mind, uh, ask a question, and I will be able to answer it maybe. If not, somebody here will. Probably Diana. Um, we did have... <laughs> she knows more about this than I do. Um, anyways, uh, let's see what our professional fees. Um, that's like our, um, our, our uh, uh, tax guy. Um, and also um, Costco. Uh, background checks, I think that comes into that too. Um, where else are we? If you keep going down, you see merchant fees, uh, tithely on online giving. It was eighty-eight dollars and ninety-seven cents. It's on here somewhere. Yeah, I see it halfway down. It's good. I'm glad you guys can see it because I can see it on here, but I don't see it on there. That's okay. <laughs> oh, there it is, way up at the top. Okay, so um, our tithely, I think they take three or four percent, if I recall correctly. So when we when we give through tithely, um, that the whole dollar value that you actually give comes to the church's bank account, and then tithely sucks back. Uh, it's like three percent, maybe four percent, something like that. And there's an option in there to. Um, pay it forward. Basically, you add that in, and so the, the whole amount comes to the church. Um, so I don't know what the whole amount is, but it does cost uh, uh, some administration fees. It's it's definitely, probably is not over in the top in the fees they charge. Uh, when we give to the Swansons uh, through their ministry, um, it is 10%. Wow. They take out 10% of it. So uh, it's pretty good with Tithely, and we've got some changes that we're going to do in the future for that, and I'll let John talk about that. Um, but um, it's actually been a blessing because a lot of the folks who are uh, viewing this online are able to give online, and it, it makes it, it actually has been easier for some folks to do that. Um, so um, is there any questions about um, this first part of the statement of activity? Um, has anybody got any questions on, 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 on any of the items that we've bought? Um, I know um, there was $900 in equipment. Uh, we've bought a lot of equipment this year. Um, it's just that we've returned a lot of equipment as well. <laughs> Trying to get this camera to work and this router to work or this Wi-Fi doodle to work. I don't know what they are. 
um, but we've had to buy things and then send them back because they didn't do what they say they do or they didn't work with our system or whatever. Um, but we did end up buying a camera and some equipment and attachments that go to that. Um, so that, that was at $900. Um, any questions so far? Okay, we'll go on to ministry expenses. Did I, did I miss anything on that, John? Did you want me to talk about anything else in there? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, as, as, as in um, the, church's, the church's expenses for keeping the building um, tip-top, uh, we have the different ministries, and some of those, they just didn't spend the monies, like the children's ministries is only $500, um, and that was for, uh, majority of that was for um, some of the Sunday school materials. Um, and then we had, um, like we uh, do the Husky Huddle, just down at the bottom down there. I don't know if we're there yet. Um, but it was $680. We, that's our, our youth budget. We took and put it into the Husky Huddle, which is down at the high school. Um, Aaron and Jenny were feeding the kids during lunchtime. Uh, we actually take, took on one, and they do it um, each Friday of the week. We took on a whole Friday all by ourselves, paying for the whole thing um, each month. So we have one, one week of every month. And uh, since school was out, uh, they didn't have the Husky Huddles, and they haven't, even st they haven't started them back up yet, um, but that money is there uh, when they do start back up. So instead of being, I think it was 1000 or $2,000, um, it was only $600. But it was $3,000, and it was only $600. So that was another area where we didn't spend the money, um, and therefore we, <laughs> we, we, even though our budget was down or our, our, the finances were down, um, it didn't hurt anything because you know, it wasn't spent. And you can go through, down through each, each line item and you can look at what we budgeted in the 2020 budget, and you can see where majority of things we didn't go over budget on almost, on almost anything. <coughs> So, any questions on any of our ministry expenses? Except the AV, which you already covered. Yeah, I did. I did cover the AV. Okay, and uh, then our uh, we'll go on to our missions. Um, now, a lot of our missions expenditures uh, stayed the same. We didn't um, cut any of our missionaries um, because they still have their needs that they have to have be met. So each each month we still paid all of our missionaries as though we were um, um, receiving the same amount of money in giving. Because um, I didn't want to like cut Tim and all that kind of stuff. And actually, um, near the end of the year, we found out we actually had a surplus in giving versus expenses. Um, and I didn't want to have a surplus. We're not in the, we, we already have a large savings account. We already have a large checking account. So we took that extra money and we sent it to Tim. Uh, we sent him an extra $1,000. Um, and uh, he, he actually talked to us uh, shortly thereafter and he said, man, it was God sent. Uh, he had a ministry that he wanted to do and it was providing uh, nutrition. To, nu Okay, how do I want to say this? He wanted to provide food for uh, kids. He, he had a, um, a family they were ministering to. They had a, a, a newborn baby. Uh, the newborn baby died of malnutrition um, because they don't um, breastfeed. And even though they, even if they would, uh, the people are so undernourished that they're not producing milk. And uh, uh, their culture is, and the way he explained it, was that they put babies on formula right away and they couldn't afford the formula. Oh. So um, he has a lady who is a, uh, what do they call them? They help with the birthday. Midwife. Birthing. Midwife, that's it. Um, they have a midwife, and um, it's part of his ministry, and she is now going to, and they ha didn't have a funding for it, but she is now giving food to these parents that are uh, parents of newborns and things like that so that they can um, keep their kids alive. Um, so uh, there's a real, it, the timing was like God's timing. So, anyways, so you'll see um, what we did with our, our, our missionaries. Um, we, we kept their, um, even though our finances were down, um, we kept their, um, our giving to them the same. 
but for the coming year we had to lower it down because we don't know what we're going to be doing um, so we did lower down I think it was um, Action International the Ingrams he's not going anywhere right now he's not doing he's not traveling overseas because nobody's traveling so we we went from a hundred dollars a month or two hundred dollars a month to down to a hundred dollars a month uh, you know Bruce and Carol Ingram and um, we also uh, Mixteco missions um, we also uh, are not giving to them anymore um, part of it is is the fact that our budget has, has shrunk a little bit but a part of it is is that um, you want to say something, John? Okay. Uh, part of it is that you know they they've been up here several times, and usually when a missionary comes by, they usually come by and talk, and they haven't we haven't even gotten letters from them or anything. Uh, we we don't know what's going on with them, and they've been up here several times, and we've asked them to come by and talk to us. So there, there's a two part of this is, and so we just we just needed to um, cut somewhere, and that was it. And that's, um, and that's not to say that if they came and right. did, that we would give them... Right. If, if a, they come up here and they, and they do talk to us, then we always uh, give an offering to them. So it's just something that we had to do. Um, uh, along with, with some of the cuts, because we, um, we budgeted to, I think it was like $75,000 or something yeah. like that, uh, we made some other cuts in some other areas. Our, our biggest expense here in the church is John's salary. Um, and I've already asked John to talk about this because... You know, it's his salary. Um, when we put his set his salary where it's at right now, we were up in the hundred, hundred and fifteen, hundred and twenty thousand dollar range per year. Um, so um, when when Kelly first came here, we were we were at about fifty thousand dollars a year, um, probably even less than that. I was, you know, I, I became treasurer pretty close to right after we got here, and I was wondering whether we will make be able to pay our electric bill every month. I was floating bills to and, and waiting for the offering to come in so I could pay bills um, and pay a salary because now we have a pastor with a family and he needs to feed his family uh, even though we have a parsonage that we gave them free rent and utilities and all that food is, is kind of essential for pastors so at that time we said his I think it I think it was only fifteen hundred dollars a month or something like that and slowly it grew up a little bit as as we as the funds came in um, so as funds weren't here we had to drop John's salary as well so he, he was at three thousand dollars a month and now he's at two thousand dollars a month and I would like to say hey that was the board's decision and, and John walked out in a huff but he didn't he actually came to the board and said hey I want you to cut my salary okay the last check I gave him um, for for December for that year he said hey that's too much I thought we decided to cut my salary and I said the board hasn't met yet <laughs> so I can't cut your salary until the board tells me to so but that's what we did um, because his salary would be thirty six thousand dollars a year and our budget is seventy five thousand dollars so that's you know just just below half of our budget would be for his salary so we did cut his salary yeah. I'm not you know I Nobody, nobody wants to have a cut in salary, but that's kind of, uh, there's, there's been a lot of, a lot of people are on a budget now, and um, it's just par for course. So um, that's what the board decided. We didn't want to do it. Um, we weren't happy about it, um, but it's something we had to do. Um, we have, you know, we do have a, a savings account. We have a checking account, and that, that money is there as a, as a cushion. As a board, years ago, we set up, we wanted to have uh, three months running expenses in our checking account or in our savings account, a uh, combination of the two. We didn't want to drop below that. Um, that's per our, our, our board, that's the standard we've set. Um, we, we've, never, we've never had to um, even come close to dropping through that. We've always had at least three months of running expenses so that we could, even if no money came in at all for three months, we could still operate, we could still have the lights on, we could still pay our taxes. Because we do pay taxes on the parsonage, not on this building here. Um, but, you know, that's, that's what we've established as a board. Um, so, and, and we've kept, it, it kept to that. And we also want to be able to minister to the community around us. We want to be able to reach out. And if somebody does need a mortgage paid or a rent or something like that, and we've done that throughout the year. Um, it would be under benevolence. 
Uh, we had two hundred and fifty dollars come in this year towards benevolence, and we spent seventeen hundred dollars uh, in benevolence funds. So uh, we we still pay people's bills. We still help help with car repairs. We still do all that kind of stuff, and we want to be able to do that in the future. A uh, part of that, um, you know, the seventy-two thousand um, dollars, we actually had a, a gift come in for ten thousand dollars, and they had that designated towards the parsonage. So um, we, we've had funds come in that it might not be a part of that general funds because it's designated, um, it wouldn't be under that. Um, but, it, but it does come in and somebody donated to have the parsonage uh, remodeled, which I don't see Jay or Sean in here right now, but they will be moving out here soon. Uh, so we'll be looking at doing it and we'll be calling on some of you guys to help. Um, I know we got Rick back there. He's, He's, he's jobbing away on his regular job, um, and we'll have to schedule it in with him um, for him to take some uh, oversight on that. But it's something we want to do. And like as and before, we, we, we really want to get somebody on board as a youth slash music, some, some type of, of associate pastor um, to help out in these areas. Because, you know, we're, we're lacking in a couple of areas. Right now it's children's ministry and youth. Um, we've got probably six or eight teenagers, and uh, we don't really have a lot of activities going. We have a whole host of mostly boys uh, going through our, our, our programs, and, and my, my kids are now in the youth category. Uh, they're no longer in grade school, um, but we do have those there, and we want to be able to minister to them. Uh, children add life uh, to a church. They really do. They have an energy level, um, and we want to be able to minister to the kids. Um, so. That's, that's the vision of the board for that, is to, um, is to bring on somebody to deal with, to deal with youth and to <laughs> minister to children. <laughs> okay, um, so I know I, I editorialized a lot of that. Um, is there any questions at all on anything in the finances? Uh, I am always available at any time. Um, if you have a question as to what's been spent, where it's going, why hasn't this happened, uh, I am always available. Uh, I have the books on, on, on QuickBooks here. We can look it up and we can find out what exactly was spent where. Um, we want total accountability, and you have that here. Um, I don't have, uh, we don't have any secrets here. Um, we, we do have, I, I'll, I'll, I'll say this, as we... Um, it's usually myself and maybe Brett and uh, Paul Earhart. We, we count the offerings, uh, you know, after Sunday church. And uh, any of the change, like if your kids come in, they put a fistful of change in there. I'm not counting that. <laughs> I take that money and I put it in a baby bottle. <laughs> and I put the lid on it and we give it to uh, Obria. <laughs> Sorry about that, but, you know, I just, full disclosure here. Not counting the change, it's going to Obria. <laughs> it goes in the baby bottle. <laughs> did, did you mention um, why we did not budget for family camp? Oh, no, I didn't. Uh, we didn't budget for family camp because we, uh, once again, we were not able to get the sites um, uh, reserved. So we're not able to do a family camp this year. Uh, if, if somebody knows, like, an alternative site um, that, that has the same amenities and the same type of thing, uh, let us know and we'll see whether we can get it. I mean, because family camp is just absolutely fun. My kids just uh -huh. love it. Mm -hmm. And I do too. Adults. And it's such a, such a blessing. Um, and last year was just a great time. Yeah. Um, we, we had a lot of people there and we had a lot of um, activities going on and, and uh, the water was very cold. I did not do much <laughs> swimming this year. I find that the water up there gets colder as I get older. I don't understand that. <laughs> but it does. It's, it's a known fact. <laughs> Um, so, so we, yeah, we don't have uh, family camp this year, which is really a sad commentary. <laughs> I just yeah. I really want to go to family camp. Okay, so any questions, anything at all? Uh, if you don't want to bring it up here, uh, feel free to um, catch me in the hallway or catch me outside. Catch me anywhere you want. It doesn't matter. You can call me. My number is on the back of the bulletins if we were handing out bulletins. <laughs> if not, it's on the website. So it should be in the directory. Um, so, John, you ready to uh, do your thing? Can we give, yeah, can we give Vic a little appreciation? Thank you, Vic. Thank you, Vic. Thank you, Thank you. He not only serves in the kitchen, he 
make sure we're fiscally sound and yes diana has a big part in that so thank you so much diana for your part in that i'm so grateful for this church aren't you yeah i'm so grateful you hung around till i get to share with you a little bit <laughs> on the other side of the green paper i'm not going to read it all for you um but it is a little bit of an overview of highlights of what we um uh, enjoyed and how god blessed us this last year in 2020 um and speaking of the family camp i um i did hear that that tadmore can't have their youth camps children's camps in the summer and they're renting out i don't know if they're renting out portions we couldn't rent the whole thing out but maybe they'll rent us a portion of tadmore for a family camp so we'll we'll look into that but at this point we don't have yeah. we don't have sites and maybe we could all go over to <coughs> rehearts and camp uh, <laughs> um, um, but yeah you can you can take a look at that and you saw a lot of things in the uh in the video too um, again, thank you, Brian, for putting that together. Did he leave? No, nope, he's right in the middle, behind Dick. There he is. He's hiding. Uh, some, somebody sat in front of me. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. Um, that Valentine's banquet last year was so fun. I really wish we could do it again. I just, but, doggone it. Um, we will, but not this year. <laughs> um, and as you can see, there's, there's, there's different... Uh, things that we really truly enjoy that I thought the summer worship was awesome um, and I was so grateful that while we had to learn how to live stream this year and we even uh, 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 included the live stream outdoors we had the you could come and, and park and sit in your car you could sit on the lawn you could uh, sit at home wherever you needed to be and I think that's awesome um, that God has given us such a, a wonderful place here to do that um, uh, and I'm and I'm and I'm grateful that that we get to continue to do some of these things: fishing derby, um, uh, uh, turkey shoot. Uh, the different ministries have a lot of ministries ha have had to settle down. Children's ministries being a big a big one, uh, and we hope that that maybe this this season this year we can pick that back up again. But things are going to have to turn their corner with this, with the virus and the restrictions, etc. Um, but I will share. Um, this is kind of hot off the press, but uh, um, Barbara and Megan are going to help out. In, in Mary's been overseeing the nursery, um, and they're going to try and get our nursery going again. Uh, if people are interested in bringing their kids and dropping off, we'll have to use you know masks and keep everything really sanitary and clean. But there's um, a real need, I think, sometimes when you have a little one and you're trying to care for your little one and worship or. Uh, 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 listen to the words so that's going to be neat we'll try and get that going in the next couple of weeks I'm, I'm looking forward to that but what's what's ahead well um, when I thought about what happened this year when we all think about what happened this year we um, we added live streaming because we needed to we uh, uh, added online giving because we needed to um, we quit doing bulletins because we needed to. Uh, even handing these out today, I thought maybe we should have asked you if you wanted a printed copy because there's a little bit of risk in getting a lot of papers and things like that. Which why we serve uh, at the kitchen instead of just going in and getting our, our own. Um, uh, same with flyers. We use email, of course, uh, but it's hit and miss. I mean, it's fascinating to me how many times people change their email addresses and uh, you don't find out till much later. So keeping uh, everybody in touch, we have a, a wonderful website that, that Don Jewett um, designed for us. Thank you, Don. And we're able to put our live stream in our, in our back, what do you want to say? our media from the past. Uh, it's all there, it's all available, and I'm really grateful for that. Um, we have Facebook, but more and more people are getting off of that for good reason. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it kind of leaves you wondering, what now? What, what, what do we do this year? And so one of the things the board discussed was maybe pursuing our own church app. Um, and yes, that's Kelly. <laughs> um, we need to increase our a avenues as you know changing times call for changing strategies and we need to increase our avenues of communication um, and we can actually do that with a church app but what we're looking at is a whole lot more than 
something for your phone. Now, one of the things is everybody seems to have a smartphone in one form or another. And um, what we're going with and pursuing, we're going to have it in the next couple of months, we're already in the process of having it designed, um, is not only our own spot, our own app on your phone, where all the information that we, our, our live stream and our uh, media and our, and our bulletin and all the, all the stuff we can make digitally available to you. Um, messaging, we can do that through, tech, uh, through just putting out messages, but you can also have selective messaging. So if you have a Bible study or uh, uh, something going on that you just want a select group, you can keep each other in the loop through messaging through the app. Um, of course, our live stream and media library will be on it. Um, a prayer portal, um, keeping, uh, that's been one of the things that have really been challenged by. It's like, how do we let everybody know? Email again is still, is still great and we'll continue to do that. But um, having that all in one place, not only sharing with you, but receiving from you prayer requests. Uh, of course, the event calendar even has a, a Bible app and online giving all under one roof. And, and while um, some of you are going, well, yeah, that's great technology, but it, it might, in fact, be very helpful this year as we don't know what, um, well, Facebook is one of them. Um, they're starting to clamp down on conservative um, organizations, and we just don't know what's coming, but this will allow us to do our own thing. And, and in fact, I, I mentioned uh, during the service when we were going to play the, the video, that annual video, that it might be muted. Um, well, when you put something on YouTube or on Facebook, if it, so, if it picks up on copywritten music that you've right. used, right. they mute it. And um, it's different if, if they consider it different if we do our own live worship, they tend to let that slide. Um, but, and we do have a, a, a license to, to do our own worship, but if you put up something like the annual video or a missionary comes and plays a video or whatever, they, it doesn't work online. Well, it will here. So that's gonna be another good thing for us. Even though we're a small church, it's a way to expand our um, horizons that way. Speaking of, um, as we refine our communications, um, this is just a, a question of throwing out to you. I'm wondering if, if uh, we should consider what we're communicating. We, of course, exist to worship Jesus. We exist to grow in Jesus, to share Jesus, um, and, and that must guide everything we say and do as a church. Agree? Yep. Any questions on that one? It's all about Jesus, right? Well, last year we became a part of the Calvary Chapel Association. Um, it didn't change who we are. We're still autonomous as far as that goes, but it, it actually helped us expand our reach and identify um, identify us to people. Last week I spoke to two different people about our church, and as I'm talking to them, well, it's a, a community church, we're in Robertsville, and when I said we're, we're a Calvary Chapel, they went, oh, and that explained a number of things to them without my having to try and explain, if that makes sense. If you're familiar with the Calvary Chapel, you can feel, you're, you're familiar with our style. We walk through the word together. We have, you know, a particular style of, as Calvary chapels go. And so for them, um, you know, a name, a name says a lot about you and I, and a name says a lot about our church. Well, I guess what I'm wondering or pondering is our, our, our actual name as we're making this change in terms of communications. Years ago, we were a CMA church, Christian Missionary Alliance. In 2002, uh, we became Crawfordsville Community Church. Um, as we grow our online presence, I'm questioning whether now is the time to even fine-tune or clarify that a little bit more with others. Um, even with thin type, that's a mouthful. And when you make an app, that's a lot. <laughs> um, so I'm just wondering if now is the time to consider going with Crawfordsville Calvary Chapel so that in one fell swoop um, we're communicating who we are. Um, I know there's feelings and opinions uh, about um, our heritage, and I'm not trying to dampen that, I'm try not trying to step on feelings, um, but at the same time, I'm trying to be as clear as we can in communicating to those who would receive this app or receive who it is we are. Like I had the two friends recently who asked about our church, how do you say it succinctly in a media-saturated 
society, it is now the time to, or at least on our app, to just go ahead and, and do this. What I want you to do is to think about it and to pray about it. Say, is God in this, or is this just a, an idea? Is this the right time, or is it not? And you can let me know. Um, let me know this week. <laughs> Again, nothing will replace a personal touch. I don't care how much technology you have. You know, when, when we're at home, we're doing the live stream, um, there's something missing. It's hard to worship when you're... Uh, I'm not saying you can't worship on your own or worship with your family. You can. But when you're trying to worship as a church, it's difficult uh, when you're staring at a screen and it sometimes is glitchy and all that kind of stuff is going on. It's a challenge. And, and, and so we're praying about how we can grow deeper together uh, in 2021, even amidst all these restrictions. Of course, here in Crawfordsville, we're able to get away with doing things like this, and so um, we'll, we'll strive to continue to do that. But um, pre please pray about this with us. Maybe it's um, home groups. I don't know what. Uh, maybe it's Bible studies in different spots. Um, I, I, I would like to to pursue this year uh, 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 more connections, more opportunities for us to grow together and grow in the Word together. Sundays are great. I'm so glad we have them, but we need to, to do as much as we can to, to absorb the word, word as we talked about in our uh, sermon upstairs. So meanwhile, I found this tool that you may or may not be interested in. It's free. Um, I, I got a, a, a PDF that you can actually, uh, it, it encourages you to write a verse a day. And remember what I said upstairs, if you read the word, it starts to get into you. If you write it down, it really gets, I'm teaching my, my son that in school right now. He's having to write things down in order to help him memorize. Do I really have to write it? Yes, you do. <laughs> it actually helps you get it into your mind. And this just simply gives you a, a verse each day that whether it's you or whether your kids or grandkids you want to do this, um, I can print these out for you. And you can just go and find the date, see the see the. Uh, verse that they suggest on that date and write it in a, a journal or something like that. It's a great little tool. It's another way of, like Vic was talking, of getting uh, into the Word and getting the Word into you. So if you're interested in that, let me know, and I'll print out that for you. Again, just another tool. But um, all in all, I just I just have to say it it is a pleasure and an honor to be sharing this journey together with you. It really is. And um, uh, as I told the board, um, when it comes to finances, God had to kick me in the butt and say, who's caring for you? Uh, the church, yourself, your job, where, where's your trust? And God has been taking good care of Diana and I and Tristan, and I know he's going to continue to take good care of all of us as we trust him. Amen? Amen. So celebrate the Lord. Celebrate his goodness. Continue to give thanks, for God is good. All the time. You both put your hands up at the same time. Uh, Mary. Okay, so what I need from concerned parents, grandparents, is your concerns, your ideas, your thoughts about putting the nursery together. And I need some bodies. At least two more bodies make the nursery work. Oh, it takes four. You gotta be an adult. <laughs> but as you get your mom to work with you, you need to be an adult. And then I need parents to come on board with the safety measures that we decide to put in place to keep it open and to not consider it, to consider it the same way I consider going into business. I wear a mask because I want that business to stay open, not because of Amen. any other reason. So that's, I could use help doing that. And prayer is always really good. Amen. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mary. Amanda. So, I started going to church here in January 2009, and not as long as a lot of other people, but I like the name Crawfordsville Community Church, but it makes sense, and I really like how it sounds, Crawfordsville Calvary Chapel. And I think, I'm not trying to start a debate, because I know change is very hard, very hard, but I just want to say, I like what you propose. 
not to start a whole debate right now, but I like it. Okay, anybody opposed, you can uh, tackle her on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> you, can come, you can come to my house and talk to me. I'm a right here, so I <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. I like it. I know that right. <laughs> <laughs> We're praying for you, <laughs> Do we remember who Dawn's dad is? <laughs> <laughs> Don't pray for me. We, we do. We do. Cecil, please. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Anyone else? Any other comments, opinions, suggestions, hopes, dreams? Again, thank you so much. Um, look forward to 2021. I don't care what's happening in our country. God is a big God. He's more than able. He's going to do things this season that, that are going to blow our minds, if only because that's who God is. And we can trust him. But we need to be open to what he wants to do in and through us. And if he's calling us to serve in a new area or to be his hands and feet or to go across the street to our neighbors and say, hey, how can I, how can I help you or uh, serve you or love on you? You know, uh, let's do it. Let's be the church. Amen? Amen? God, thank you so much for your goodness to us. We, we are so grateful to be your church, and we pray in Jesus' name that you continue to shine upon us with favor, and that you continue to shine through us to those around us, our family, our friends, our co-workers, uh, Lord, our community. Uh, we pray for this community in Jesus' name, God, that you would uh, let us be a light, that you, the Lord, uh, the light of the world would indeed shine through us, and that people would find their way to us or we would find ways to reach them uh, and that they would see that you are good and that you are uh, uh, alive, a living God who wants to know them and, and love them and be loved by them. So I pray uh, for our community. I pray for the season this year uh, that it would be wonderful and blessed, blessed beyond measure, not for our glory, but for yours. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, now it's my turn. <laughs> I just want to um, encourage all of you to, um, if you if you just put it on a card, pray for John and Diana. Pray for them. If you're not praying for them already, pray for them. They carry a burden for this church that many of us know nothing about. When he he came to the board meeting and asked for this, we taught discussed the salary thing. I've been in a lot of churches, big and small, that the, the pastor reducing his wages is unheard of. Um, it, it, it is such a humbling thing for me to have a pastor that's conscientious about the, the, the finances, conscientious about all of us that he's serving. They pray for us all the time. We need to, I just really want to encourage you to, to be lifting them up in prayer because the burden that they carry is, is really really big. So, anyway, thank you, John, for all your work. Your humble services. We appreciate you. Have it your prayers. That's great. Thank you. God bless you.